by being a research subject, you end up being part of this enormous, it's an absolutely enormous endeavor. You can't cure a disease, for example, until you understand what the disease is all about. A meticulous system is in place to oversee the research process and assure your protection as a participant. I'm, I'm going to start you filling out your, your questions now. Experts are available to answer your questions and resolve any issues, and researchers will provide you with the information you need to understand clinical studies and make an informed decision. Any information you provide will remain strictly confidential. One misconception I think that many people have who participate in research is that they are going to be treated like a lab rat, that they're going to be treated like a, a second-class citizen. And the reality is that that's not the case. So is there any mail for me? Dr. Christopher Ryan is the director of the Institutional Review Board at the University of Pittsburgh. The review board is made up of scientists, doctors, and community members who review and approve studies and ensure that the rights, safety, and welfare of participants are protected. Risk is something that we are very concerned about. We're interested in getting high quality, scientifically sound information so that we can address scientific and public health issues. We have a wonderful system in place here at the University of Pittsburgh to make sure that we do everything right. Artery disease takes about 10 minutes. Legally, we have to provide people with a written consent form, but there's also a consent process where we interact with the subject in as much detail, as much time to describe what the study is about, to talk about what they're going to have to do. And I deal with questions not only from research subjects, but from the research staff members and from investigators, because you know the investigators really want to get this right. You are here for your 36-month follow-up, so that does require a repeat EKG. Okay. You recall your the process is called informed consent, and it means that researchers must explain all the details of the study to your satisfaction before you decide whether or not to participate. In some cases, you will have the chance to review the consent form at home before making a decision about participation. You will receive information about the study, discuss the study with healthcare professionals who are part of the research team, and if you decide to participate, sign an informed consent document outlining your rights. Participation is totally voluntary and you can leave the study at any time without jeopardizing your care. I want people to have an interaction. I want the individual to ask the investigator, so what's this all about really? What, 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 what things are going to happen to me? And, and have a discussion about it so that people are fully informed. 96 percent, that's what we would expect. It also gives us a pulse rate. Throughout the study, exactly. participants have direct access to the research team and are evaluated according to the research study plan that was discussed with you when you signed the informed consent document. I see you have some blood work ordered. The researchers have more time to spend with you as a research subject. You, you ought to have, I think, kind of a warm and fuzzy feeling uh, knowing that this work is going to potentially improve the lives of other people. The end result of the, the kind of research that typically gets done in a medical center is ultimately to improve the quality of life. Nice job. Good girl. Can you turn around so I can look in the other one? Research studies need participants of all ages, but parents may be hesitant to enroll their children in research. It may be an easier decision once you understand how past research has shaped current health and safety practices, and to know your child's participation will help to improve the future of health care for them and for other children. Clinical research has a direct impact in what we do on a daily basis. It has to do with why we wear a helmet for uh, riding a bicycle or why we wear a seat belt in a car to whether we use antibiotics or we don't use antibiotics to treat a specific condition, what do we eat, whether we exercise or we don't exercise. So every aspect of what we do and the medical care we receive is directly related to some clinical research that at one point evaluated that specific topic. So this is the scan from the baby yesterday. 
Dr. Alejandro Hoberman studies antibiotics and improved treatment for ear infections and urinary tract infections in children. The passion I feel about clinical research in general is that we're addressing all the unknown points in the care of children. The questions we ask are the questions we live with every day. And where was it located exactly? It is exciting to think about all these questions and hear questions others have. Look at this one. In general, parents like to be part of that process as well. Parents like Shannon and Justin Fry, who enrolled their daughter Elizabeth in a study when she was having urinary tract infections. Two and three. And now it's Elizabeth's turn. When they started telling us what she had, you know, it was just everything was new, so the more information that we could acquire, you know, the better. So it seems to be improving overall. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's it. Diana Kearney is part of Dr. Hoberman's research team. She works closely with participants and their families to guide them through the research process. Parents need a lot of support from the research staff in, in order to be able to make a good decision. This is the mother that called last night mm -hmm. and um, wanted to talk about the baby crying. They really buy into the fact that what they're doing is important for somebody's future. We're fine. Good. The Fries felt comforted by the information they received and by the fact that they were encouraged to ask questions. I would just say give it a chance, find out as much as you can about it, and ask as many questions as you can. And, you know, when we asked Dr. Hoberman and his staff, you know, any questions we could think of. I call Dr. Hoberman on a regular basis, and he is always answering his phone or he'll get back to me right away. So I never thought anybody would, was irritated or bothered whenever I'd ask. I would say I am worried whenever people don't ask questions and I enjoy the questions because it allows me to expand to try to meet those needs. I always tell parents that you know at the end of the day they have to make the decision that they feel most comfortable with regarding their children. You remember when your back was sore but the nurses were really nice? Yes. Yes. And staying in the hospital? Yeah. Someone who understands that need well is Carrie Mathias, who faced many medical decisions when her daughter Anna was diagnosed with a form of childhood cancer. When she was diagnosed with neuroblastoma, um, right around her surgery, they asked us if we would be willing to sign off permission that they could use um, her any blood or any tissues that they were taking for research so for down the road they could learn more and more about the type of cancer that she had. And I was, that was the first time that I ever thought about clinical research and how, yes, it does affect other people. My first thought was, yes, if this is going to help another child down the road or help them treat another child a few years down the road, then absolutely. But I thought some child may have done, done that five or ten years earlier that's helping them today get her better. Are you all better today? Remember when your back was sore? Yeah. I think you should definitely do it because it's your way of kind of contributing and giving back to what someone did for your family at one point in time. Learn more about clinical research and ongoing studies at the University of Pittsburgh. Visit our website or call today.